Welcome or welcome back to my channel and it's a new year mm. and there are many new, year, new years like depending on when you count it. So right now we have this new year according to the Gregorian calendar and part of what we're going to be diving into is the different ways of looking at time, different ways of looking at the sequencing of seasons and the changing of energies. And I'm delighted to announce that I'm going to be doing monthly human design transit reports. I know many of you have been really my loyal followers of my weekly transit reports, and I've been doing them for almost three years. When we get to the human design new year in January, it'll be three years. And honestly, I need to stay fresh. I need to keep doing things that are going to interest me and excite me and push me to grow and to learn because that's what my life is really all about. So I'm not going to be doing those weekly transit reports anymore. However, there are still many, you know, like many, many transit reports that you can go and check. And I'm going to be providing a tool. I don't have it ready yet, but I want to let you know that I will be able to provide you with a tool where you can actually search my previous transit reports so you can get an in-depth understanding about any of the gates that you want to do research on. So I'm not going to leave you high and dry about going deeper into the different gates. I'm going to give you um, a tool that you can um, that you can get from me if you if that's something that you want. But I really think that doing it this way, it's going to provide you with the ability to plan better. It's going to give you a whole picture for the month and not just for the next five or six days, which is really what the weekly transfer reports we're doing is just because the sun and the earth, they move pretty quickly, you know, every five or six days. So this is going to give you an overview for a month. Plus, it's also we're going to step back and we're going to look at even bigger um, t pieces of time than a particular month. So I think you're going to really enjoy this with me. Um, and I, I'm going to just encourage you to hang in here with me. This is a big experiment. You know, human design is a big experiment and it always encourages us to experiment, run everything through our own system. And so that's really what I'm doing here. And it's actually a key component of your ability to understand human design is to be able to zoom in like we go and we look at, okay, there's this gate, right? The sun is in this gate. So we're zooming in, getting specific, unpacking that. But then we also want to be able to zoom out and get a bigger picture. So we're going to be doing more of that during these monthly um, transit reports. So I hope that you're going to enjoy. Let's go ahead and dive into January 2024. Let's start with the human design mandala. I love the human design mandala. It's just beautiful and just to look at. And really the whole human design system, other than the quarters, which we're going to talk about, are contained in this one image. Let me just walk you through it in case you've never seen it before. So around the outside, you'll see the uh, astrological signs and the astrological symbols. This is showing us what the year looks like according to human design. So you'll see here we've got Capricorn and we're going to begin in Capricorn. We go around. Here's the different astrological symbols through the year. Inside of that are the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. That's what these little hash marks are. Then inside of that, you're going to see these little lines. Those are the lines of the hexagram. So for example, with your profile in human design, like my profile is a two, four. So I would see that the second little uh, mark would be there on the gate. That is my, where my son is. Okay. So that's what these little marks are. These are the, the lines. And then inside of that, you can see the gate. So here, this is the 11. The 10 and the 11 are right next to each other right here at the top. And so this is um, representing the fact that the 11, which is right here, and the 10, which is over here, are being lit up. So then you see there's the gates. And then when you look on a mandala, like your mandala, you would see the little planets in here. In this particular representation, we don't have any planets. Um, this is just for illustration purposes. Um, but you would ordinarily see planets in here. And then depending on where the planets are, that will light up your, your different gates. And that's what gives you definition in your own human design, um, in your own human design chart. These are the quarters according to human design. And 
when you take these in, for the most part, you just kind of have to take them as part of the lore, if you will, of human design, because they don't relate to the seasons. They don't relate to the astrological um, signs, as you can see here, right? It's like the first quarter begins on February 3rd um, in the middle of Aquarius, okay, as we move into the gate 13. Then <clears throat> the second quarter begins on May 3rd as we move into the gate two. The third quarter begins on August 5th when we move into the gate seven. And then the uh, fourth quarter begins um, on November 5th when we move into the gate one. So what this reminds me of as a descendant of Celtic people, okay? So my, my ancestors all come from the British Isles. And so we're Celtic people um, before colonization by the Romans. And so we lived in a time where we had eight holy days during the year. So we had solstices and equinoxes, which you're probably more familiar with. But then we also had cross quarter days. And so when I was looking at these quarters of human design, and I don't quite know what to make of this yet. So you're going to have to stay tuned as I dig into this more. But is that the first quarter begins um, on February 3rd and in bulk begins on February 2nd, also known as the uh, Feast of St. Bridget Day. And then the second quarter begins on May 3rd. Um, hmm. Beltane, also known as May Day, is May 1st. And then the third quarter uh, begins with on August 5th, which is very similar to Lamas, which is usually August 2nd. And then uh, the fourth quarter begins on November 5th, uh, which is uh, just a few days after Samhain, which is known as the, the, the new year in the earth-based spirituality. And this got me thinking, because human design can be very intellectual, right? It can be very cognitive. And even though it is talking about what's happening over the course of the year, it feels kind of disconnected a lot of the time from what's happening in the living world. Like if you look out your window, right, and you're looking at what's going on out there, a lot of times it feels really disconnected. Whereas this feels to me like it is embedded in a kind of ancient understanding, which is different than what we get from astrology, because in astrology, the astrological signs and in also in Western culture, the seasons change on the equinoxes and the solstices. And yet for the Celts, the cross quarter days were actually more important. The, uh, what we hear the fourth quarter, right? Samhain was considered the beginning of the new year. Spring was in with in bulk. February 2nd was the beginning of spring, not the middle of winter. Um, Beltane was the beginning of summer. And, um, and then Lamas was the beginning of the fall. So we've got a very interesting connection here that I haven't unpacked all the way because I'm kind of zooming out and analyzing this and taking a look at, well, how do we understand human design in, in relation to these other systems? And so uh, this is what really just stood out to me. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. So stay tuned, because I imagine I'll be doing more of that um, as we move forward in the future. Here, you can see also, I, I was like, okay, well, the, if those are the cross quarter days, let's take a look at where the solstices are and the equinoxes are. Hmm. Interestingly enough, you can see they're actually on a um, on a grid here. We've got the vertical axis going through uh, uh, dis the solstices and the horizontal axis is going through the equinoxes, right? Very interesting. But then also take a look at this. All of the gates that initiate at the beginning, uh, you know, with the solstice, are in the vessel of love, which are centered in the G center. So the winter solstice lands typically on the, with the gate 10, which is the gate of self love. Uh, the spring equinox uh, begins with the gate 25, which is the love of spirit. And the summer solstice begins with the 15, which is the love of humanity or compassion. And the summer equinox begins with the 46, which is the love of the body or embodiment. Very interesting that we are initiating the, the these new energies at these different times, all based in love, all based in identity, all based in our direction in life. So I think there's a lot for us to unpack here as we go forward through 2024, and we'll be looking month by month at what's happening. Mm.
Okay, so right now we're in the fourth quarter known as mutation or calibration. So it begins here with the one with sowing, right? This is basically uh, the beginning of November, uh, very end of October. And so this is the quarter that we're in right now. And so according to human design, we're in a time of completing and of recalibrating and of deciding what we want to take forward with us. Now, I want to just make a note here because I have a lot of people in my community now, and you, this might be true for you, who live in the Southern Hemisphere. I find a lot of the interpretations to feel like they're really embedded in the perspective of those who live in the Northern Hemisphere. So I want to just invite you, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, to just kind of put a pause on some of this and take it in, see how it lands for you, see what feels right to you, and also potentially to explore for yourself, is it different for you in the Southern Hemisphere? Now, there are certain reasons why this is set up this way, and we're going to talk about that. But I just really want to encourage you to know that it's possible for you to take anything that I share or that anybody else's shares and you can run it through your own system and through your own life experience and where you're living in the world um, to be like, OK, is that true for me? How, how does that land if uh, our seasons are actually reversed as they are in the north and in the south? So here again, just in January, we're going to go um, from the 38 to the 19. So the transits that are happening in January 2024 actually are the same in every January of every year. It may not be exactly the same dates, but they're very, very close. I went back and I looked through my ephemeris. So one thing I want you to know is even though we're looking at 2024 as we go through this year, looking at the transits by month, to know that whatever year you're in, so if you're watching this video in 2025 or 2026, this is still relevant for you because it's actually the same. It's very interesting. So as you can see, we went from the 38 to the 54 to the 60 to the 41 to the 19. Now, one of the key things to get about this is these are all on the root center, very, very centered in the root center. Um, and then we also have two that the earth is lighting up that are all on the root center. In addition to that, we also have Pluto, who's still in the 60. Now, the 60 was is, is lit up by the sun as well, but we also have Pluto here. And then a really interesting thing that's happening this month. So this is what changes year to year, okay, where the sun and the earth are same. You know, each year, January, it's going to be the same. But what's different is where the other planets are. So I wanted to just pop this in there so you can get a little bit of a sense of this, which is that Mars, Mercury, and Venus, all three of them, during the course of January are going to cycle through the gate 58, which means it's lighting up yet another one of the gates um, in on the root uh, center. And you can see only the 52 is the only one that isn't being lit up this month. But here we've got Mars, Mercury, and Venus all saying it's important to have joy. It's important to have pleasure in your life. It's important to laugh. It's important to have happiness. It's important to celebrate, okay? So even as we're going through gates that sometimes might feel a little challenging on occasion, to also remember that there's an antidote here with joy um, because joy helps make everything easier. The root center is what it seems like, right? It's at the base of the spine. It's that what the pelvic floor is. In quantum human design, it's known as the divine timing center because it really influences timing. And one of the ways we can influence timing is through our preparation, our uh, getting ourselves prepared to be able to actually engage with the aspects of life that we want to have, but we might not quite be ready for them. And so we can influence timing by getting more prepared. Now, the other thing about the root center, and you may know this from any meditations that you've done, especially if you've looked at the chakra system. I'm not going to talk about that today, but I am going to cycle back to the connection between uh, human design and the chakra system because I also am trained uh, as a radiant body yoga teacher, particularly Kundalini yoga. So we are going to do that, but we already had so much data for this particular video that I didn't want to bring that in. However, what I do want to emphasize is, is that because it is the root, it's at the base of the spine, 
our ability to ground, our ability to build our relationship to the planet, to this earth that gives us life, right, is absolutely a core component of the um, uh, of the root center. So the different elements that the sun is highlighting over the course of this month, um, the sun and the earth are leadership, okay, in the gate 38, um, ambition in the gate 54, conservation in the gate 60, imagination in the gate 41, attunement in the gate 19, provocation in the gate um, 39, and starting things in the gate 53. So we're going to be looking at these uh, a little bit more in depth. Now, I also want to point out that the throat center is also being highlighted primarily by the earth. There's just one gate that the sun is going to light up uh, during the course of this month, but then there are three others that the earth is going to be lighting up. So the sun's going to light up the 62, the earth is lighting up the 56, the 31, and the 33. So the throat center is really important in human design. It's the center for articulation, right? Our ability to speak and express ourselves. So to be able to give a voice to things, but also just more generally to be able to express. And then also to activate, right? It's known as the activation center in quantum human design. Like being able to, you know, kind of get things going. And then also to manifest, right? To bring things into form. And so what's being highlighted during this particular month has to do with storytelling. Um, storytelling is in both the gate 56 and the gate 33. Leadership in the 31 and then attention to facts and details in the 62. So you can see that we've actually got two of the major leadership gates are being lit up by the sun and the earth during this month. Let's dig into some more specifics uh, having to do with the gates. We started on the 31st, New Year's Eve, when the sun moved into the gate 38 and the earth moved into the gate 39. Now, I know these these are part of the, uh, uh, the cross of tension. I actually have these in my incarnation cross. I have the right angle cross of tension is my incarnation cross. And um, I, I just actually listened to a report that my mentor, Karen Curry Parker, did where she was looking at all of 2024. And I will put the link to that. It's on Facebook right now. I'll put the link to that in the uh, in the description because I highly recommend that you go and check it out. But I do want to say here that she's pretty negative about the 3839. And I understand why she feels that way. She's like, yeah, it can be very provoking. The thing I want to say, because I have to live with this, right? And I've really had to make my peace with these two gates. And yes, they're on the root center. Yes, they're kind of intense. They're in the knowing circuit. Um, they're definitely mutative. They're definitely evolutionary. They have an edge to them for sure. And they can be huge allies for us as well. So the 38 is affectionately known as the Martin Luther King gate, right? And because it is the energy for putting a stake in the ground about what you believe in. And I personally think that's really important for us to be able to do. The thing is, is that if we're, we're in the old paradigm of power where we feel like we have to manipulate or control other people, it's what I consider the shadow aspect then it can be pretty gnarly, right? Because we're, we're going to be the fighter, you know, we're going to, you know, try to make other people do the things that we want them to do. But of course, if we go and just look at Martin Luther King, if he was an advocate of nonviolence. Yes, he stood up. Yes, they took action. Yes, you know, in civil rights, there was a lot that was going on that was provoking. It was provocative. It was disrupting people's sense of normal. And it was doing it by putting a stake in the ground around the values of equitability, of, of that all human beings are worthy, all human beings are valuable, and that we are all connected, and that what is done to one is done to all, right? All of that. So when you can really lean into that gate 38 by asking yourself, what is it that really matters to me? What is it that I want to put a stake in the ground around to say, I'm going to be a stand for this. Okay, this is something that really matters to me. I'm sure you've already done it at some point in your life. Um, and, you know, you just may not have always done it really consciously. So when the sun's in the 38, it's really saying to you, hey, what really matters? Like, are you aligned 
with the things that you would actually fight for, non violently, but that you would, you know, you would go to bat for, if you prefer that metaphor. And then the 39, mm, yeah, the 39 can definitely be provocative. It can be provoking. It can feel a little like, but the thing about the 39 is, is it's really designed as part of this mutative energy to help disrupt our sense of what's normal. And in this case, it has to do with what's normal around our relationship to abundance and prosperity, because it's made the 55, which is lit up by Saturn here, you can see here in this chart is all about knowing that we have what we need when we need to have it and that we don't have to accumulate. We don't have to hoard. And part of this legacy that we have that is coming out of the age of empire is this belief that we have to hoard, right? That we have to have more and more and more in order just to be safe. So we want to take a look at that and really ask ourselves, is that really true? If we live in abundant world, then can we have what we need when we need to have it? It's a big mantra for me. Like I just reminding myself whenever I start going into scarcity, I start getting a little bit afraid. It's just to remind myself, I always have what I need when I need to have it. And so the 39 can be such a huge ally for us around that because we can provoke ourselves when we start going into scarcity. We can disrupt that old story that there isn't enough and that we have to fight each other um, for, for, you know, whatever it is, whether it's food or a place to live. And I, we know we're really getting to the end of the efficacy of that point of view, you know, that, that we had to hoard. And it's part of what has made us extract from the earth. It's part of what's made us be killing our planet. And so that 39 can be a huge ally for you, especially that 38 and that 39 together, just to be like, you know what? We are going to not keep on doing things the way that we have. We're going to take another look at this. We're going to say no more. Okay, we don't have to live that anyway. It's huge, huge allies for you in terms of your deconditioning. So here I wanted to show you where the 38 is and the 39 is in the mandala. And you can see they're across the mandala from each other. And this is always how the earth and the sun um, move around the mandala. They're always opposite each other. And you'll see that uh, as we go through the slides. Here on January uh, 6th, the sun's going to move into the gate 54, which is the gate of drive or the gate of ambition in traditional human design or the gate of divine inspiration in quantum human design. And then the earth is going to move into the gate 53, which is all about starting things. It's like beginning, getting things going. And so that makes a lot of sense, right? That we're going to have this energy for starting things here, um, it, here at the beginning of the year. The 54 is a powerful, powerful energy. I have this uh, actually lit up by the moon in my chart. The moon what drives you. So I have the moon driving ambition in my chart. Mm, yeah. So, so it's an energy I've learned, hadn't had to learn how to navigate. And so the thing about the 54 is it can be really, really great for you for the things you want to do in life. Like if you're thinking about, you know, here we are putting a stake in the ground being like, okay, what really matters? Then the sun comes up and says, hey, now you're going to have the energy that you need to move forward with it. That's where that drive is. And the earth is like, hey, let's get it started. Let's get going. Let's move forward with this. So this is actually a really beautiful um, alignment for us to begin beginning our new year with. And here they are again across the mandala uh, of, of each other. Here is this, the sun is in the 54 and the earth is in the 53. And we're going to pause here on the specific uh, tr journey of the sun and the earth to note that the nodes of the moon are going to change on January 9th. Now the nodes of the moon are really important. They're kind of like the big themes of what we're living in, like the big soup that we're living in. And the south node here, which it has been in, is in 32 right now, and the 57, okay? The south node is kind of like what we're, we bring in with us. It's like w when we look at this in a, in a personal chart, we say that's what the person brought in with them. It's kind of like the, um, the themes of their early life through their first half of their their life and then the north node uh 
is more about the second half of life and what we're breathing out, like where, where we're, what we're moving into. And so we, the nodes of the moon are typically in a sign uh, for anywhere from, you know, a month to three or four months, just kind of depends on the particular transit. And so here we've been in the energy of um, endurance of being able to hold on to a big idea until the time is right for us to be um, moving forward with it. And then, um, um, the 42, which is all about completing things, finishing things. That's where we've been. And then we're going to be moving into this configuration where the south node is in the gate 57 and the north node is in the gate 51. Now the 51 and the 57, this is a big, big change in terms of the qualities of the energy. The 57 is all about intuition, but it can get stuck in the fear of the future because it is a splenic energy. And so it can get stuck in the fear of the future. So you want to watch out for that. But in its awakened expression, it's highly intuitive. So you want to be looking at, you know, how is your intuition coming online in a new way? And then the 51 is the energy for a shock in traditional human design or initiation in quantum human design. It's an initiating energy. So it's again, here we are, the, the first part of the year, we're kind of initiating, getting things going. We're initiating our own selves into higher consciousness. That's typically how we talk about it. But it's also about just kind of initiating um, things that are happening in our lives as well. So look for a big change that'll happen starting around um, the 9th of January. Then on the 12th, the sun is going to move into the gate 61 and the earth is going to move into the gate 62. Now this is the only one of the transits in January that is not highlighting the, um, the root center. Interesting right? So um, we do have uh, the 58 lit up here. I was talking about the 58 earlier. Who's in the 58 right now? Um, Mars. So this is Mars is in the 58. And, um, and so I was talking about, you know, we have this gate of joy. <laughs> um, and Pluto is still in uh, is still in the 60. And here's just the moon in the 19. But the, the moon's only there for a couple hours. So a few hours. So Let's just talk about the sun in the gate 61. So the gate 61, it's right up here. It's the beginning of the knowing circuit. It's plugged directly into super consciousness. So while the sun is lighting that up, again, you can expect that your intuition is going to come on stronger online. You might be getting really big downloads. You might have epiphanies. You might have insights. Uh, it, these are things that you didn't learn anywhere. Nobody taught it to you. You didn't read it in a book or anything. You just, you, you pretty much downloaded it right through that, through that gate of wonder. So pay attention to that. Honor the different kinds of insights that come to you and, you know, write them down. Talk to your friends about them, but only their friends who are really open to this kind of thing um, to, to just explore what's going to be true for you. Now, we've got a little bit of creative tension here between the earth in the gate 62 and the sun in the gate 61. And the reason for that is, is that the gate 62 is in the logic circuit. It's very kind of, you know, it's logical, it's analytical, it likes to know all the details, it likes to know the facts, right? And so, you know, the earth is kind of like, okay, what are the facts? What are the details we need to know? How do we need to prepare, right? It's very kind of like, you know, strategic and analytical where the 61 is like, woo, what is super consciousness downloading to me today? So during this particular transit, just notice if you have some tension going on there. And please do not allow that energy regarding details and facts and preparation and strategy and all of that to undermine your ability to be receiving those downloads because those downloads are super, super valuable and we need them. We absolutely need them. So here they are on the mandala. Okay, here's the 61, the uh, sun in the 61 and the earth in the 62. Okay, then on January 17th, the sun is going to move into the gate 60 and the earth is going to move into the gate 56. Now, the sun here in the 60 is joining Pluto. Now, Pluto is in the gate 60 for about three years. Okay, between going forward and retrograding and going forward and retrograding three years in the gate 60. So we're getting like a uh, PhD level <laughs> uh, training in the gate 60. So the gate 60 is also in the knowing circuit. You know, I was talking about the downloads are coming in here through that 61. Well, in the knowing circuit, it comes in. Um, 
uh, will split through the throat, go around both sides of the body and up through the central channel. And so as it does that, when we get to the root and the energy is down there um, in the root and it's going to be coming up through that central channel, the 60 is there to say, hmm, we just had access to a lot of evolutionary mutative energy. Which of all of these possibilities that have come in are actually really useful? Which are the ones that do we want to accept? And which ones do we want to say, mm, not so much? So the fact that Pluto has been here for so long, this is really a collective experience with the 60. Now the sun is going to be a, a little bit like a highlight. It's going to be like, hey, you know, the 60's kind of been, you know, moving around in your background. Pluto's going, pay attention to the 60. Like, what's really important? What are you going to take with you? What are you going to leave behind? You know, Pluto's been saying that all this time. And then the sun's like, hey, hey, have you been listening to what Pluto has to say? Because now take a look at the 60. Now, this can go sideways with conservatism because this is going to be really um, mutative evolutionary energy that's bringing about significant change. So we can really see this in our world today with people who are wanting to go back to an older time. People who are like, you know, what happened to our America? You know, um, you know, what are all these like people of color coming into power for? And what are all these, you know, lesbian and gays and binary trans people like that? Is, is there something wrong with those people? <laughs> So that's what can happen with this conservatism, right? Is, is we want to go back to the good old days when men were men and women were women and everybody knew their place. Well, I think to remember that all of that that we think of as conservatism now, it's all relatively recent in the history of humanity. I mean, really, we're, we're talking a number of hundreds of years or maybe a few thousand years. And, you know, humanity's been around for 150, 200,000 years. So it's relatively recent. And yet there can be a lot of energy around that grasping on trying to put things back into the old and pushing away the new. But it's inevitable because we're not going back. It's not possible to go back. The energy of moving forward into a more equitable, more sustainable, more regenerative, more kind, more compassionate future, it's unstoppable at this point. Uh, you know, there is just so much that is going on in the big cycles um, that is bringing this forward. And so I just want to say to you, if you've had any fear around what's going on with this conservatism that we see in a bunch of the world, not just in the United States, just the place I know the best because I live here, then don't worry about it. Just stay focused on the evolutionary impulses that matter most to you. And Yours are going to be different for you depending on, you know, what your values are, what your lifestyle is, the people who are like, like I have a kid who's non-binary. So the acceptance of LGBTQ people is super important. I've always been a bit gender divergent myself. So it's like, you know, the idea that women would go back to being, you know, when women were women, we knew our place. I mean, no, <laughs> Like that is not going to happen, right? And so I'm a big advocate of allowing us to be evolving. And so take a look at that for yourself, because this is like a, a super theme, because like I said, Pluto is here for three years. It's a long time. And now the sun is lighting up as well. Then the earth is lighting up the gate 56. So the gate 56 is one of the beautiful storytelling gates in the chart. It's, it's known kind of as the... Um, divine storyteller in quantum human design. And so it's an energy for, it's collective because it's in the sensing circuit. So it's collective circuitry. And we want to look at how, uh, what are the stories that we're telling about the collective? And I think it works so well with the gate 60, right? Because when we're looking at either evolution, m things moving progressively forward to being more equitable, sustainable, regenerative, compassionate, kind, and so on, then what are the stories that we're telling about the past? Are we telling stories that want us to move backward to some other time? which is probably as much in our imagination as any lived experience anyway? Or are we telling stories about um, the, the possibilities of where we can go from here uh, based on an understanding of the past that is really um, kind and inclusive? 
And so this is going to be a really big transit for us to be leaning into. So mark this one on your calendars. And then you can see where it is here on, on the mandala, right? Again, just trying to help you understand how this system works a little bit better. All right. Then on the 23rd, woohoo! it's the Human Design New Year. The Human Design New Year begins every year when the sun moves into the gate 41, which in traditional human design is known as the gate of fantasy, and in quantum human design is known as the gate of imagination. Now you might ask, why does the Human Design New Year begin with the gate 41? I have to say I have the same question. Now I have read and heard of the explanation for this, and I'm open to that possibility. I'm, I'm holding it open. I'm not quite sure how it lands for me, to be totally honest. But the idea here is, is that the, the um, 41 is the initiating codon in our DNA. Okay, is, is that if you were to, to take the strands of DNA and string them all out, they would start with the 41. And so this is the idea is, is that it, it lands in um, the gate 41 initiates you know, part of the lore of human design, core to gene case. So accept it as you will. Um, question it if you'd like to. Um, but let's just take it the way that it is now. It's interesting to me that a lot of the conversation that I read about the human design new year and the initiating energy of the 41 is all about it starting new things. And yet we think of this as a very imaginative, creative energy. And fantasy is generally thought of as the kind of either uh, disempowered expression, you know, where you're just in wishful thinking, and yet there's it's not grounded in reality at all, right? Or is um, in the shadow expression, which is where we're asserting uh, certain fantasies on on other people and trying to control or manipulate situations through our ability to project. Um, uh, our vision um, onto other people. But another way to think about this is it's just a very visionary energy, an imaginative visionary energy. And you can empower yourself by asking yourself, how can I use my imagination? After all, imagination is a core aspect of our intuition, right? Because what is intuition but our connection to the all that is? our connection to, you know, the, the greater creative intelligence of the universe, which is constantly creating all kinds of things, including us, right? And so our imagination is a component of that. The sensing circuit is highly creative. It's highly intuitive. And so the invitation here, um, I would say, is, is what are you going to imagine as you're moving into, we've had, we've had initiating energy going on all through the month, right? And here we are on the 23rd. And now we've got this <sighs> happening with the new year and this initiating codon. And then what are you going to initiate? Like, what are you imagining? What do you want to put your, the creative, uh, you know, juice that you have towards, right? Because we tend to allow our, our imaginations to be colonized by media, by the news, by movies, by television. And so it takes a certain amount of our energy to decide, hey, I'm going to be in command of my imagination. I'm not going to allow myself to be taken over by other people's stories and other people's narratives. Because after all, there's so much you know, apocalypse out there. Um, but do you really want to put your energy towards apocalypse? Like, could, couldn't we have, you know, a more rich and vibrant imagination than apocalypse? Mm, I think so. Then that 41 is resting on the gate 31, the, the earth lighting up the gate 31, which is on the throat center. And it's all about um, how do we lead ourselves forward into a more equitable world? And so that energy of leadership, and it's a leadership that really is about being able to, to have a world that works for all of us, that that can be like, okay, we're going to ground ourselves in that so that our imagination is always resting on the sense of what's going to be best for all of us. How can we step into a sense of leadership individually and collectively? Because it's collective energy. It's actually in the, in the um, pattern circuit or the logic circuit. 
how can we move forward, you know, into this new year with this sense of possibility that we get from our imagination and also grounded and supported and stabilized by this sense that we can actually be leaders in our own lives. So that, here it is in the mandala. Here's the 41, right? And here's the 31. So again, you can see them across the mandala. Then on the 28th, the sun is going to move in the gate 19 and the earth is going to move into the gate 33. So again, we've got, you know, a, a gate on the root center. And so the thing about the 19 is it's known as the most sensitive gate in the human design chart. It's very, very sensitive people who are consider themselves highly sensitive people often have the 19 defined in their chart. They're just super like, this is where that entunement comes from, right? So they're very, very highly um, sensitive and they have the capacity to be able to tune in to the emotional state and the energy that's around them and wanting to be able to attune it so that it feels good and it works for all of us. The thing is, is because they're so sensitive, if it's not an attunement, if it's dissonant, it can be really, it can feel very, very harsh. So you want to be looking at how can you be expressing because the, you know, the sun is going to be lighting this up and it's like, okay, what are we attuning to? What energies can we bring up so that it feels the best to us? How do we raise our frequency? How do I raise our vibration so that we can really make the best of our sensitivity and not be overwhelmed by it. That's a huge opportunity that we have for ourselves. So then the sun in the 19 is resting on the earth in the gate in the 33. So the 33 <clears throat> is on the throat center. It's another one of the three storytelling gates. And it is about being able to retell the stories of the past. And these are collective stories for the most part is how do we retell the stories of the past so that they are more useful for the present? You know, this is a huge ally for us as we are helping to bring in the positive energies for this new world, for a way of being where we recognize that our, we are interconnected and that we're all in this together and that we need to find ways to get along with each other and to work with each other. And so the 33 is asking us, how can we retell stories of the past so that we don't see ourselves as being pitted against each other, right? Um, and instead, we can see how we actually can all, you know, we can get along and we can work with each other. Doesn't mean we're going to be the same. Doesn't mean that we're going to agree about everything at all. Recognizing that our diversity is our wealth. It's not a distraction. It's not a deterrent. Okay, it's actually our wealth. And so how do we retell the stories of the past so that we can embrace that? And as we do that, we create the foundation for that. It gives us the ability to attune ourselves on a whole different level to what is possible. So that's where we're going to end the month of January. So that's our journey through the gates for January 2024. But as I said, the, these are the energies that the sun and the earth are going to be visiting every year at this time. So as you start to really understand, as we go through the year, I hope you'll travel with me during the year, you'll start to see the qualities that are happening in each month. And so you'll be able to take this with you as you move forward into your life year after year after year. I want to invite you to come and participate with me and our global community of sovereign evolutionaries in 10 days of sovereignty. This is going to happen January 15th to the 25th. We will be celebrating the human design new year during this time. We're going to be having five different live events during uh, this 10 day period. Uh, the other days you'll be receiving um, valuable content that you can work with in between. And the purpose of this is really to be building your personal sovereignty. So your power within and also to be exploring your sovereignty with others. How do you engage with others as sovereign beings. And this is based in my book, 
uh, feminine sovereignty, eight pillars for regenerating ourselves and our world. And so we'll be pulling themes from the book, um, different content from that. And it's all designed to help you have a better understanding of what sovereignty really is, how you can build your personal sovereignty, and then how you can move in the world as a sovereign being and that this is a way that we can use the best of this evolutionary time to be stepping out of that paradigm of of perpetrator and victim and rescuer that we've been really stuck in for a long time and we can move into a different relationship with power building that power within and then sharing and rotating power with others so we're moving into a new paradigm of power and how do we actually do that a lot of this i think has been conceptual for us and i wrote this book um not because i've mastered everything in there um although i have walked it all but not not because i've mastered it but because this is how we explore together how we're going to do what I've been talking about and what the human design is inviting us into, which is how do we be in the world with each other in ways that enable us to um, create this new world that so many of us are longing for. I will go ahead and put the description, uh, put the, the link for this in the description. This is all free to you. And then also, uh, we're going to be starting the um, the Feminine Sovereignty Explorers Club that'll be happening in uh, starting in February. So this is a way for you to get a little bit of a taste of what it's like to work with me around sovereignty. And if you decide you want to journey with me through 2024, then that'll be your opportunity uh, to do that. And so I hope that if this calls to you, that you will join us. And if you want to be part of a community of purpose and of passion that want to help bring in this new world and to know that it's so much easier when we do this with each other than when we do it alone, that I hope that you'll join us. And I hope that you enjoyed this uh, monthly transit report. Please do let me know down in the comments. I always like to hear from you and, uh, you know, uh, I love to get your feedback. Okay, many blessings. Much love. Bye for now. <laughs>